I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Most Smashers suck at fighting games. Whenever Smash players hop on a traditional fighting game, it feels like a completely foreign experience and results in rapid frustration. Can't kill me. <laughs> they think that all the skills and fundamentals they've learned from Smash Bros is completely lost in a traditional fighter. Does this statement resonate with you? Well, thankfully, that statement is wrong. Platform fighters are still a fighting game at their core, and there are multiple fundamental skill sets that overlap between the two genres. Things like movement, spacing, reactions, reads, and mind games will always be prevalent in fighting games. The problem is that Smash players simply have a hard time translating these skills they learn from Smash into traditional fighters. Just as an example, how would you, a Smash player, defend against this specific approach? It's an easy question with multiple correct answers, so don't overcomplicate it and try to be truthful about it. There are a few correct ways to defend here. Just to name a few generic ones, you can stuff it out, move out of the way and whiff punish it, or just simply shield the fair and punish out of shield. This is anti-airing. Anti-airing is a super important skill not only in Smash, but also in fighting games. But even though Smashers anti-air their opponents all the time, you'd be surprised how many jump approaches in fighting games go unanswered from Smashers. And that's because there's a key fundamental difference between anti-airs in Smash and anti-airs in fighting games. The difference lies within these two options, with punishing and punishing out of shield. These are amazing options in Smash and are usually the default for all skill levels. But let's see how these answers transfer over to fighting games. The problem here is that blocking a jump in doesn't guarantee a punish. And movement in fighting games are often too restrictive to whiff punish a jump in on reaction at certain ranges. The easiest way to beat air approaches in traditional fighters is to stuff it out. Whether that be air to air before the attack comes out, or with a powerful grounded move that beats out the approach completely. This is the fundamental difference between anti-airs in platform fighters and in traditional fighters. The best anti-air in melee is a dash dance grab, and the best anti-air in street fighter is the shoryuken. Recognizing the same skill set, but also learning the differences and reworking how you play in specific situations is how you get good from one game to another. But not everyone's laughing. So when a smasher sits there and only blocks instead of anti-airing, now you know why. Subscribers to this channel already anti-air like a pro though. Real ones know. Another important skill in Smash revolves around tech chasing. When getting tech chased, there's only one decision. You choose which direction to tech. And if the opponent correctly covers your tech, there's nothing you can do since you're already vulnerable before you can act. But if they incorrectly cover your tech, whether that be through a missed read or a slow reaction, you have one more decision to make. And that is what to do once you're actionable. There's lots of risk reward that go into a tech chase from both the attacker and the defender. Whether you're safely covering multiple options with down smash, or you're going for a hard read stomp knee, the mind games and reactions required from both sides of a tech chase is a fundamental part of smash. This fundamental skill revolving around knocking down the opponent and tech chasing is called okizeme, shortened to oki. In fighting games, basically oki is what you and the opponent do when one of y'all is knocked down. However, there is one huge difference between getting knocked down in smash and in fighting games. In Smash, when you get red during a tech chase, you can't escape the following combo because you're vulnerable before you can shield. But in every traditional fighter, you're actionable and vulnerable at the same time. What this means is that you can always wake up block in fighting games and never get hit by the attack. This may seem completely different when compared to Smash, but it's much more similar than you think. Think back to the decision making required when the opponent is just a little too slow on the tech chase. This very moment, which is extremely common, is when tech chasing in Smash and Oki in fighting games are the most similar. The decision making and risk reward assessment in these moments are the difference between an extended advantage state and a huge reversal. Like anti-airs, the skills and fundies you learn during tech chasing in Smash can translate over to fighting games in the form of Oki. You just have to learn some new options depending on what fighting game you're playing and reframe your risk reward surrounding these options. And let's be real, getting reaction tech chased by a Sheik is a million times worse than getting throw looped in the corner. At least you can do an option to get out. There is an extremely important and powerful fundamental skill that you learned in Smash that doesn't carry over into fighting games. This skill, whether you learned it through Wave Shining Peach across FD or doing 10 Luigi zero to deaths in a row, is your thumb dexterity. Looking at an arcade stick, obviously this skill won't carry over, but you'd think this skill carries over perfectly on a PS4 controller. To put a long story short, digital input is very different from the analog input you're used to in Smash Bros. Motion controls are something every single new player struggles with, and unfortunately, Smash players are not an exception to this. My only piece of advice is to play on a controller that's either comfortable, available, or cool to you. 
There's one last fundamental skill you've learned through playing Smash that is extremely important, but also very different in traditional fighters. You learned this best when ledge trapping in Smash Ultimate. When you're ledge trapping, the goal is to cover the opponent's ledge option to keep them on the ledge. The ledge is obviously very dangerous in Smash. You're much closer to the blast zone, you can't dash back, you could get gimped and lose your stock early, and whenever you're right on the ledge, you're only restricted to 5 options. The ledge is an extremely dangerous spot to be in Smash. And in traditional fighters, so is the corner. In all fighting games, pushing the opponent into the corner makes it so the opponent can't walk backwards anymore. And most max damage combos are only available at the corner. More specifically, in Street Fighter 6, if you block a drive impact in the corner, you still take damage, even though you blocked. In Tekken, you can hit the opponent against the wall and break it down for big combo extensions. In Guilty Gear's Drive, wall breaks award you with constant meter gain. Positive bonus. And in Soul Calibur and Virtua Fighter, you instantly win the round with the ring out. The fundamentals of keeping the opponent in the corner should transfer over from Smash Bros to other fighting games, but there's one problem. Corner pressure is a two-sided coin. On one side, you have to know how to keep the opponent in the corner. But on the other side, when your opponent puts you in the corner, you have to know how to escape. This is where the bad news comes in. If you put a Smash player in the corner in a traditional fighting game, it's really difficult to jump over your opponent. There's no way to roll right through them. There's no way to ledge dash with 15 frames of actionable invulnerability. And there's no platforms to jump onto. Most of the options you're familiar with are gone. As a Smash player trying to learn fighting games, it feels suffocating and frustrating getting stuck in the corner. You'll have to completely relearn how to get out of the corner. These fundamental skills are meaningfully different from Smash Bros. 2 fighting games, but that doesn't mean you're screwed. Recognizing anti-airs, knockdowns, and corner pressure, then comparing these situations from fighting games to their Smash Bros. counterpart will help you improve your skills so much faster compared to a complete newbie. This mentality can also be applied to concepts like neutral, movement, punish game, and virtually anything else in fighting games. Your Smash Bros. fundies can carry over, but you must recognize the parallels and then connect it to stuff you already know and understand in Smash. I want to help you guys enjoy the upcoming golden age of fighting games. There are a million guides out there that will teach you about the fighting game concepts, but none of them will tie together concepts directly to Smash Bros. So let me know in the comments if you want to learn more about fighting games from the perspective of a smasher. I'm Hippo and I'll see you next time.